God, let your power start with us. Let there be, let the, let the word of God touch us. Let the anointing flow in this premises, oh Lord my God. And let your power, let your will be done. Do what only you can do. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Let us open our Bible quickly. And I'm looking at First Chronicle chapter 4. First Chronicle chapter number 4 is what I want to speak about this morning. And the topic is don't settle for less. Don't you settle for less. First Chronicle chapter 4. And I'm going to read from verse number 9. First Chronicle chapter 4, verse number 9. It says in there, First Chronicle 4, verse 9, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. I'm going to stop there. The verse, verse 9, I want to talk about, to, to, about today. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez because I bought him in pain. Now, what does honorable mean? Honorable means to be respected. Honorable means to be uh, respected, to be humble, to be faithful, to be somebody that is a sincere person. An honorable person is somebody that does not lie. Somebody that is respected, respected among the society. So the Bible says here that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. The Bible did not say he was more richer. The Bible did not say he was more powerful. The Bible did not say he was very, very or more anointed than his brothers. The Bible says he was what? More honorable. The Bible did not say he had more clothes, he had more shoes. Did, no, no, no. The Bible did not even speak about wisdom. The Bible says he was more honorable. He was more honorable. When you say somebody is an honorable person, he's a respected person, a man of his words. So Jabez was more honorable. I want you to underline that part in your, in your Bible. Honorable. So are you also an honorable person? Are you intending to be honorable? Are you praying to be a child of God of your words? You know, his brothers might be rich. Famous, anointed, but the Bible did not say that. The Bible said he was more honorable. So I have come here to tell you this morning. Do you desire to be honorable? When you are honorable, when you go outside, they acknowledge you. They respect you, they look at you. Some people don't have money, they don't have too much cars, but they are honorable, they are respected. So it's people are not, they don't, they don't see visions, they don't, they don't do healing. But when they preach, they preach honorably. They preach the word of God with sin. They preach the word of God with truth. So it's sometimes it's not about money, fame. But the Bible says that Jabez was honorable. So in your life now, what do you want to be? Do you are you looking at riches, fame, or do you want to be an honorable person? I want at that man. Oh, that man is a man of his words. That one is one of the words. That is what we are supposed to be looking at. And then something happened to this young man's life. The Bible says that when the mother bore him, she named him what? Jabez. Jabez, Jabez means born with sorrow. She, 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 she gave him that name. She already prophesied before when she was pregnant that Lord, when I have this child, I will name this child Jabez. You know, when you are pregnant with a child, and before that baby comes out, you already have a name in mind. When Jesus Christ was born, the Lord sent an angel and said to Joseph, you will call his name Jesus. So you see, but this woman called this boy's name Jabez. She called him sorrow, pain. Jabez means pain. The boy's destiny has already been, been, been pronounced. So I am here to encourage you. I am here to ask you a question. What is that prophecy that you have pronounced in your life? What is that situation that you are going through now that you think that is like that? Why is it that you are settling for less? Just because your mother and your father divorced or they were not together, does that mean you will end up like that? No. So I am here to tell you. 
So what is it that you are, you are, you are settling for? Just because one church is not growing, does that mean your home will not grow? Just because your dad cannot see visions, does that mean you will not see visions? Just because your dad was not a worker in the church, does that mean you will not be a worker? Oh no. That has changed his story. He changed his situation. He said, I am not settling for this name. I am not settling for this destiny. My mother said that my name is Jabez because I was born with pain. So therefore, everything that surrounds me will be in pain. I am not settling for that. So what about you? Your friend will tell you, oh, I don't have my papers. I don't be fine. I gave them a good story. My story was more founded than yours. So if, you, if you, your whole story now is not even as strong as mine, so for me not to get mine, you will not get yours. How many, many of us have been afraid? I can't get it because I don't even have a stand. Many of people have said to us, oh, you don't have a degree, you didn't go to university. I went to uni, I have PhD, I have BSc, I still can't get a job. How much you that I didn't even go to uni? So are you settling for what your friend has said? Are you settling for what you do, that you are, you, are, you are hearing? Or are you telling God, Daddy, I might not be the most educated, I might not be the most talented, but I will be the most prepared? <laughs> I'm, telling you some, some, tell, I'm telling you something. So look at your life. Have you read this story properly? Have you looked at what happened there? Bible did not, Bible did not say that Jabez was rich. Bible did not say he was anointed. Bible did not say he was a pastor. Joseph, sir, was not a pastor. Joseph was not an apostle. Joseph was an evangelist. Joseph was Joseph. And then the same Joseph that did not have a title attached to his first name, he had a dream. And when he said his dream, Bible says that he had a dream again. And then he interpreted his dream to his brothers. And then something changed. And for 13 good years, this Joseph went through his tomb. He went through his difficulty. And then after 13 years, he, went, he occupied his seat of honor. Because he didn't settle for less. He didn't give up. Yes, they can take my jacket. They can take my coat. But you cannot take my soul. You can insult me. You can refuse me. You can deny me. But you cannot decide my freedom. Hey, hey, hey. You can give different examples regarding your life. So what are you doing to change your situation? Are you settling for it? Have you let fear come into your life? Oh, I'm afraid. I cannot do it. I'm scared. I cannot get my papers. I cannot get married. I was speaking to somebody yesterday from the US. And she was telling me, Man of God, my sister is not married. My brother is not married. And she lives in, in, in Illinois. In, 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 in Chicago, in America, yesterday, last night. And she said to me, Man of God, I am afraid. I am getting to my mid-30s. I am not married. <laughs> I laughed. And I said to her, you are afraid of what? Because your sister married today, or your brother is not married. Does that mean it's going to happen to you? I said, the reason why you are not married is because you are settling for less. The reason why you are not married is because you are looking at what happened to your family to decide your own destiny. She said, what do I do? I said, open your mind. Free your mind. Bible says it in Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. It is what you think that you will be. If you believe, believe that you will be big, you will be big. If you believe that you will make it, without you will make it. If you think that you will not make it, you will not make it. So what is it that you believe? What is it that is inside your heart? What is that you will be? If this young girl believes in life as mommy, listen mommy, I don't know what you've done in life. I don't know how far you've done in life. I don't know your situation, but I am going to be more than you. And then mama will say to her, I need you to be more than me. Our prayer is that our children be higher, more than we. So if you look at, we have children now, they are growing now, we want them to go to university. Maybe we didn't go to university. Maybe we went into this world, maybe we forgot what we have done. We don't want them to be like that. We want them to go higher. But a woman had a baby and she made me jealous. She made me sorrow. She already predestined. And then another woman had a baby and then she went to the temple and she cried. She wept to God and she said, God, if you will give me this child, I will give this child to you. 
Why one was telling God, I will give my son to you to, to serve you, and another one said to God, I am giving this boy a sorrow. Hannah went to the temple. She said, God, if you give me this child, I will give you this child to work for you. I will give this child to be a worker in your temple. Another woman had a baby, said, I will name this child sorrow. I will name this child pain because I went through pain. So there is two different things to life. One gave the child. You know, Bible says that Anna gave up Samuel to God. Samuel sir, was not yet born. And the mother already sacrificed Samuel to work for God. Why another woman had a child called Gabbis and she named him sorrow? There is two things to life. It's either you make it or you don't make it. It's either you send it for less or you don't send it for less. So what is it that you want to do? The Bible did not mention Jabez's father. There was nowhere in the Bible the Bible mentioned his father. Maybe his father was not with his mother. Maybe his father has separated from his what? His mother. You know, I was going to um, Google yesterday and I was looking at Ryan Gates. There's a footballer called Ryan Gates. And I was checking his, his story on Wikipedia and I realized that his name was not Gates. His, yeah, his, I think his name was Jones. That was his father's name. But when uh, Wikipedia said that when his father left his mother, Ryan now changed his name to his mother's name. So that Gates is his mother's name, not his father's name. He changed his name. And when he began to have some controversy about what he did with his father's wife, his father came up and began to talk evil about his own son. Go and check it in Wikipedia, right? Please. So you can imagine that the father came out because they accused him that he slept with his father's wife, and then the father came in Manchester and began to speak evil about his own son. Why? He was angry because the boy changed to his mother's name. He was not checking. When you get over that, Brian Gates and check Wikipedia. You see it, see it there. So the same thing with this man, Jabez's father was not mentioned. Maybe the mother had a very bad experience. Maybe she couldn't forgive. Maybe say her, ah, because your father left me, I am the only one carrying this pregnancy. I'm the only one feeling myself. I will call you sorrow. It doesn't mean just because you are going to stop does not mean that you will cost your children. Does not mean you will settle for less. Just because you are going to storm in England, does not mean your children will go through it. Come on, somebody, wake up. You gotta wake up. Enough is enough of settling for less. You gotta wake up and say, oh no, I, I will make it. Just because we are struggling now, does not mean you will not make it. You need to pronounce, prophesy with your mouth. I say, like tomorrow, God will be better. That's what we gotta do here. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we, we shall do. We need to pronounce with our mouth. Hey, brother, let me tell you something. I am not happy with this anointing. I am not happy with only this, with this, with this work. And I'm on prayer night. I'm on TV. I'm, that is not where I am going. I am going higher. I want more. I want a different banner with different programs. Okay, that's what I want. I am not certain. Everybody can see. You can see. Those ones are little. I want more anointing. I am not certain for less. Hey, you can't hear me. I want to own this girl. I say, my dear, come here. I want to marry her. Say, come here. Come here. Come here. I want to say, listen to me. Speak healing. And then you say, somebody receive. And then I want this girl to be useful by God. I want to be able to mentor her, encourage her, pray for her. Tell her to go and do it. I don't want to say her, you cannot go in. Sir, I won't be able to tell you, sir, that sir, just because you are in Russia does not mean you cannot do healing. You are not settling for less. That is not who you are. You want more. You want God to use you more. Come on, somebody, you gotta wake up. People are still sleeping. Christians are sleeping. Christians are settling for less. If I have 10 people, I am okay. If I have a clean job, I am okay. Is that what you have come to this world to do? Come on, you cannot pronounce with your mouth. Prophesy to yourself when you wake up in the morning. I am not settling for less. You want more? More, bring more job, bring more job. You want more overflow? Jabez woke up one day. He said, listen, 
said, Mama, I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what daddy did to you. I have my own destiny. I have my own life. You cannot change my destiny. Hannah said concerning her whole son that she will give the boy to the house of God. You are cursing me. The guy woke up and said, Mommy, you can't change me. You can't pronounce my destiny. I am who God says I am. I will be what God says I will be. Hey, you know what I'm telling you? I have I said to you when we're doing some Sunday school, I have encouraged myself. I said I am not settling for less. God, if you want to use me, use me properly. Advertise yourself through me. Pronounce yourself through me. Make me to be a name. Make me to be an household name. I don't want to be a man of God under the gutter. No, you gotta wake up. What do you want? You leave this room tonight or this morning or you get home tonight and say to God, God, listen, I have had something and I want my story to change. Pronounce with your heart. Believe with your heart and pronounce with your heart. Don't just believe in your heart and go and say, hey, that's it, you just understand. I don't need to understand nothing. There was a woman in the Bible called Hester. She didn't have no NI, no passport, no family member, but she became the queen. She didn't go to Judy. Bible did not say she gave that certificate. No thing, no CV, nothing. And she became a queen. So what, what was wrong with you? You don't see me you think about who you have. You don't have to have family here. You don't have to have money in your bank account. But when you go to God, He will change your story. He will give you a new life. Oh, I feel like preaching. I feel like telling somebody, wake up. I feel like telling you, why are you settling for less? Once you are serving God, you know the God you serve. You've got to change your story. Change your destiny. Pray to God. Talk to God. And believe in God. Don't settle for less. Just because it's, it's, it's England, nobody is a billionaire. Nobody it doesn't mean that you will not be a billionaire. And in my church, nobody drives a Bentley. Nobody drives a Jaguar. It doesn't mean you will not drive it. You know, when I bought my car, I bought a coupe. I bought a sport coupe. I said to myself, I have given PM. I have given Zafira. I want something sporty. <laughs> Are you missing? Sir? I went to buy a two door, two door. Coupe, if you want to enter my car, you have to wait for me first before you enter. <laughs> Respect me first, don't just open my car. You, I need to come down first and then you wait. I change my level. I, I want something different. I'm telling you, you know, sometimes you can get what you want. Just because you have food at home, my dear, you have rice, you have beef, but no, you know my Chinese. Mommy, I think I want something different this night. Oh, come on, what's wrong with you? Hey, we have rice. Mommy, I want something different. I want five pounds to buy Chinese. Do you, do you get me, sir? It doesn't mean that because you have an uh, orange juice, you will not drink apple. It is what you want. And if you have the money today, tell God, God, I desire to drink orange juice, apple juice. I want Chinese next week. Make a way for me. Let somebody bless me. It happens. So why are you settling for less? Many people are settling for less. I don't want to settle for less. I want God to use me more. I want to be able to do healing. I have not seen those healing in Manchester. The blind has not seen. We are all making noise. We are all praying. We are not preaching. No people has worked. I want more. How can you say that you have caught me? How can I say I'm born again? I hear from you. And then you cannot make me to heal somebody. Sir, Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. If you don't ask him, you will not give him. People are settling for less. There are some people they have gifts. They cannot use it because nobody's encouraging them. Nobody's telling them you can do it. In 1 Samuel 9, the Bible says that who? So he wanted to give up. He wanted to go back. He said, I am tired. He got to a place called Zoo. He said, I am going back. You will not go back. I said on my TV broadcast, you go because you don't have a paper. Those only they will deport you. You are already in this country. They will not send you back. Backwards never, forward ever. I don't care what your case look like. I don't care what your situation look like. Hey, sir, when I was in Highland, 
It has that we don't care about story. We just say to them, ah, we are in this country, we want to stay here. In fact, all of my friends said to them, there are no much people in this country. I want to multiply here because God has brought me here. They gave me back. See, as long as you have said to God, I want to know you. I want to serve you. Your past is done. Nobody can judge you of your past. That's the whole chapter of your life. A new chapter is with God. Don't settle for less. I, I have not gone to uni. I didn't go to college. But I speak English. Come on. So what's the problem? I was not ordained by man. I was ordained by God. And God has taken me to America, to Australia, to Europe, to Africa. Because I said to God that in the day you called me, I said to you that day that I will serve you. I gave everything for you. So how do you want to use me? Only in Manchester? No, I'm not settling for that. You got to use me in America, use me in Australia, use me in Europe, in Africa, use me in TV. If you are judging me by the crowd that are here, then you are judging me wrongly. If you are judging me by having people are coming to church, then you are judging me wrongly. If you are judging me and say, ha, if I is, nobody is in the church, then God did not call you, then you are judging me wrongly. You don't judge me. Judge me by what I do. Judge me by what I have achieved. <laughs> That's the way it works. He's going further. His calling is more than here. His calling is going higher. The guy is looking for different opening, different places that God can use him. He's making efforts. Nobody can judge you. Just because you're here, you're not married, no papers, no money, no car, does not mean they can judge you. You are more than this. I said it yesterday. You are more than who you are. Jamie said, oh no, enough is enough. My school, you have not prayed. If you tell me, oh God, everything you say will be done. We've prayed. Then why is God not answering you? Why is God not answering you? Somebody will say to me, man of God, you tell us why God is not answering us. I'll say, because you are not doing enough. What am I supposed to do, sir? Stop listening to negativity. Sir, just because somebody brought you to church, when that person go, they must not take you. Is that also, man? The person that brought this man to church is not here. But he came. But sir, many of us are hearing. We have not confirmed. Oh, that pastor is bad. He's bad. Let me go and experience it myself. Don't tell me. That is why many of us are, we are still what? Limited. I'm not telling you the truth, that's why. A pastor once told me, man of God, you know your ministry, you know, I know you are doing well, but you know, just settle for those people. I said, no, sir. He said, you, you say you want to go on TV, you have this prayer line, you show. Don't, you can't, nobody has done it. I said, sir, I will do it. Sir, that was about two years ago. Now, I have done prayer line. The same man of God that said I cannot do it, I now gave him the, the website. He's not doing it now. The same TV that I started, the same man of God now called me one day. He was asking me about it. If I have said it, I said, ha, sir, you are a big pastor here. Me, I'm just coming up. I will hear, I will listen to your advice. I won't be doing this. Jabez said, listen, mama, you know, his brothers must have intimidated him. Because maybe they are powerful, maybe they are rich, but he was more honorable. Honorable, respectable, decent. His accuracy, he doesn't lie. His yes is yes, his no is no. And he said to God, God, I am not be the most holiest person, but I am one of the most committed person. Change my situation, change my name, give me a new beginning. And God answered it. The Bible says that God answered it. Hey, listen, this, this morning, God will answer it. Don't let nobody discourage you. Don't let nobody, I'm telling you, don't let nobody spoil you. No matter what you are, no matter who you are, you will, you will be the one that will prove to people. If you see them and say, eh, I'm not at fault, I didn't do anything, I didn't, and you are crying there, you will end up crying like that. But when you stand and say, listen, you will not get to get me. You 
cannot intimidate me. I'm not settling for that insult. I am going outside to show you that God will use me. Sir, on my Facebook, I started one day when God said to me, begin to put prayers. I want to give you Facebook ministry. I thought it was a joke. And then he said to me that internet ministry, social ministry, I am giving to you. People that have come to this ministry, they some of them have seen me online, on Facebook. And I begin to put one prayer. From there, one person will like it. One person will say amen. From there, two people. Now, 40, 50, 60, I say amen on my Facebook. I started with nothing. I started one day, sir, with a prayer. So if I don't start, how will they see me? So, because we are a man of God, God will just begin to advertise you. How? You have to make him advertise you. And if I didn't put that prayer on Facebook, nobody will see me. Nobody will even say amen. But I begin, and then it took a while. Now, if I put something on Facebook now, at least 10, if not 60 or 100, will say amen. I'm telling you. This morning I put something on Facebook there. People are already liking and saying amen. But I encourage them. I encourage them. I, I, I force my way into land light. You have to do the same thing. Anointing will not push you to land light. You must push the anointing. Yes, God has called you. He gave you a gift. You know, we saw this girl come and sit here. She's not going to stand there and God begin to sing through her. No. She got to open her mouth. She got to start. She got to begin to build that confidence. And that's what she's starting now. I didn't start like this also. I was shy when I first started. I was shy. But later on, I said, no. Shyness is not my portion. If I, if I encourage and entertain shyness, I will not go forward in life. So I tell you today, beloved, <laughs> change your situation. Give yourself a push in life. If you want to know about God, push God. If you don't move God, He will never move you. If you say that you are anointed, you have a gift, and you, if I don't pray for somebody, my dear, if nobody come there yesterday, who will I be beside you? And people that came there, I had to invite them to come. Is it not so? So I need to invite them, encourage them, do unveil, I will have to do my own and then God will do his own. But without you doing your own, God will not do his own. So I want you to open your heart this morning, no matter how old you are. Set a mandate. Tell these children, they can hear it. It's entering their mind. Kids always encourage people. Kids always encourage adults. Mommy, you can do it. The man of God said you can do it. Don't worry, mommy. God loves you. We don't end up like this. Things can be like this for us. But tomorrow, we shall smile. We shall be happy. And then the mother will say, oh my dear, thank you so much. Every one of us needs somebody to encourage us. If you are on your own, you are finished. If you don't have anybody praying with you, encouraging you, you are just on your own. You are an entity. Nothing. So I want to tell you this morning, I want to encourage you. Wake up. Wake up. He was more honorable than his brothers. You are more honorable than your brothers also. Don't settle for less. One day you will talk to God. Begin to do more. Go for prayer work. Fast. And when you are fasting, let your fasting be fasting. No TV. No X Factor. No my man there. Correction streets. Minimize your phone. If you don't off your phone, anytime you see a call that you can call tomorrow or later on, don't answer it. Be with God. That's how you get it. Have an open mind. Don't be discouraged. Don't let nobody bring you down, no matter what happens to you. They can take your coat, they can take your jacket, but they cannot take your soul. I need you here to work hard. Push hard. All those athletes, all those footballers you see, they do exercise. Tiredness exercise. They go for training. And then when it's come time for Olympic or World Cup, you begin to see Messi displaying Messi. Uh, Messi, uh, what's that? Who's the running? I'm doing like this. 
Because it, it, it's gone through its time of exercise. People are beginning to help him. Eh, they get jealous of him. Who are you jealous of him? He went through his training. And when it was only me, they begin to call him. They begin to call his name. Some people cheated and they handled the words falling. Many people, Marion Jones cheated. She headed up with nothing. Some people cheat with drugs. So I even took drugs, they headed up with nothing. My cousin, many of them, they died or they headed up with shame. Michael Jackson. I can go on and give you this. You gotta start well and you must finish well. You need to start your life well and finish well. Don't settle for less. So please here this morning, I want to tell somebody here, you will not settle for less. Your life is not about less. Don't let nobody intimidate you. Don't see, I, I, even me as a minister of God, sir, I have seen, in the, in the, I was in a church in America, and one pastor looked at me. He said, how old are you? I said, I was about, I think about, I'm, I'm going to be 41 now. I think that was about uh, two years ago. He said, you are very young in ministry. You are very young. What, what do you have? <laughs> I said, what do you mean, sir? He said, what, what do you have? What, what can you preach? What gift do you have? I said, sir, don't worry. God will use me when I get to the podium. Be one big American man. When I entered the pulpit, you know, what he said to me was ringing in my brain. I came from England. He's telling me what do I have. As I was standing in, I said, I will show this man. When I got there, I said, come on, everybody. Rise on your feet. Come on, rise, rise on your feet. Ha! I begin to worship. Oh, we stand, we stand in of you. Ha! I begin to control my move. All eyes closed now. I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a pastor, a prophet. Ha! Everybody, I said, if you open your eyes, you are disrespecting God. A man of, I was watching him. His eyes was closed. I said, now, kneel down now, everybody kneel down. <laughs> I said, now, everybody kneel down, everybody kneel down. They obeyed me. That's what I got. Sir, when you are loaded, you, are, you will be needed. Don't let nobody bring you down just because you are starting your life. I was starting my ministry. At that time, I was just maybe like three or two years. And he was asking me, what do I have? Sir, if that man of God see me now and say, young man, I asked you some years ago, what do you have? I'll say, sir, I have different ministry. In America, in Nigeria, I've been to everywhere in the world. The last time you saw me, sir, I've been to Australia, I've come to the US, I've been, where have you been, sir? What do you have? Come on, don't let them bring you down. What do I have? I am on TV, sir. I am doing my father's work. It's not about money, about fame. That is what I have. I have that seal in me. I have that fire in me. You have that fire in you, beloved. Don't let nobody ask you, what do you have? If we leave this church now and we go out and somebody is looking at us and counting how many members, they will think that's what we got. But that's not what we have. That's not who we have. This is a new start. You want to know about what I have? Check my profile. Oh, know me? Check me on Google. Type my name on Google. Type Godwin or Jenny on Google. You will see me there. That's what you tell your enemies. I'm Googleable. I am respectable. Jabez said, I did not set you for less. But he said he was not honorable. Come on. You know, I, when I read this story this morning, I felt something must born in my heart. But I have been a victim of people criticizing me. You cannot make it. When I first went to the U.S. 2008, a pastor, I preached about my first time in America in about 15 churches, I think 13 or 15. They all did and did. And this pastor came to help bring one of them. The people walked in one church. The blind, I, I was in one church in Massachusetts. The pastor said, pray for this man. I said, the Holy God will Hear our prayer. He said, No, sir, decree is blind. I said, I said, I said, I said that was, he said, No, you decree. And I decree, and the guy's eyes begin to open. I said to him, Was this man blind before? He said, Oh, yeah, everybody knows him here. And then, sir, the 13th church, 
This man came to hold those programs. I didn't use any oil. I didn't use any handkerchief. I didn't use anything. I was preaching. And, and this man asked me for a reference. I said, what? He said, I need a reference. I said, when you are not a doctor, he said, yes, but I still need See, some people are still asking you for reference. You want to get your papers? You're looking for reference? You want to get a job? They are asking for reference. Mommy, when you have your own company, nobody will ask you for reference. Have you? When you have your paper, you don't need nobody's reference. So you have to tell God, Daddy, I will not settle for this reference. Somebody gave me reference on Monday, again on Tuesday. Why? As a child of God, who gave this Jesus Christ reference? <laughs> who? Nobody. The person that gave me reference was John the Baptist. Said there is somebody greater than me coming. I mean, a prophecy came before Jesus Christ came. And when Jesus Christ came, when he was in the water, who gave me reference? God acknowledged him. This is my God is the only one that will acknowledge you. If you are waiting for man, if they are looking at you like this. Beloved, after this service now, I have people at 9 o'clock, close to sometimes 120, sometimes 70, sometimes 60, tonight, all over the world, America, China, Australia, waiting for me on the phone tonight. The same me that they say I am not here. On Tuesday, I will be on TV, the whole world. I watch you. Sir, and they look at you, they say you are nothing. They are judging you just because of the way you are. They are judging you just because of, no, they don't know you if I walk on the street now. Nobody knows who I am. Are you getting my point? Barack Obama, so people don't know him. David Becker went to America, nobody knew him. But God we advertise you globally. I'm telling you, beloved, please don't settle for this. Sister Lizzie said something yesterday. And God used the money yesterday. And God used it. That was yesterday. That was yesterday, sir. People that came here yesterday are not here today. But my life, I have done the yesterday program. I am doing today's program. I have tonight's program to do. And I have all I want to do. That is the way your life is supposed to be. Different businesses. Jabe said, I am not my mother cost me. As your mother cost you. Ah, you know, you know, so coming and I said to them, go and ask your mother what happened when you were born. Or so so and so that and they come and tell me something that was terrible. Some people go to the to the to the to the to the to the secondary agents for a child. So you could have a child just at the wrong time. So you see, it, she cost him. So maybe, maybe she was fighting with, him, with his dad. Who are you fighting with that is making you to cost your children? Or who, who has cost you? My dad and my mom were not together. They didn't, I didn't grow with them. You know, I, 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 I was on my own. I had a rough life because I didn't have that love. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't settle for that. You know, I, I changed my destiny myself. I was a frost star before. You know, I, I, I sat down one day, I said to myself, I can't continue like this. You have money, you are afraid. You have money, you cannot walk free. You know, I, I, I have to, even though God call you, you have to call yourself. I was carrying drugs in my stomach. I was going from one country to another country. I, I, I'm tired. Now I have peace. And I started with nothing, only two people, three people in this church. I push myself and say, I don't, I need to start. I don't need to cut a crown face. Let me start from nothing. Bible says your beginning might be small. Come on, somebody, what have you started like this? Why are you waiting for people to, to, to push yourself? Children, push yourself. Don't wait for mommy to say, let us pray. Mommy, let us pray. Take control. Don't wait until everybody say, uh, the church pastor is so, so, and so. You do your own pastor. Come on, someone, let us do something ourselves. Push. If you don't move yourself, God will not move you. I'm telling you. People are waiting for God. I'm anointed. God will use me. He will not use if you don't use yourself. So maybe, maybe there's somebody here. Maybe this short exhortation has helped you. As, as encouraging you. Just be 
because you are gifted does not mean God will just wake up one day and take no. Am I not gifted? Have I not seen governors in Nigeria? Have I not seen Queen Latifah in America? Have I not seen them? Why am I still here struggling? Because everything is a process. It's a time. It's time, sir. There will be a time you look back and say, ah, when I started the church. And then you look at now and say, Daddy, thank you. And then you leave the church also. For the next person to continue, you will move on. Don't die there. You have other assignments. But so you want to die, the only people you see in front seats, the same pastor, the same minister, for the past 10 years, they are still the one there. Nobody is coming to preach it. Uh, because they, I don't want them to stay in my pulpit. You are staying in your pulpit yourself. Give people a chance to come and talk. I'm telling you. So what do you want to do? How do you want to change your life? Are you settling for that rejection letter? Home office writes you, and the, the Secretary of State has concluded that who, 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 who? There was a time I was applying for my daughter's uh, state, and they wrote me, uh, the Secretary of State has, uh, the book is, has concluded, has decided that your application for your daughter is unfounded. I replied them! I said I reject it! I want to go to the part of the country, whatever they call it. You reject him because of who is the deputy of state. I say, I've been here. How many years? You're telling me you reject him. Why would I can't go anywhere again? They gave up. <laughs> see, the one lawyer told me, you don't have a case. Just see if you can go back to a family member. I say, where? I say, she's my daughter. I am the only dependent she has. Tell him, go, go where? Don't let those refusal letter. Don't let it bring your life down. It is not the end of you. Not when you have people like this. Children, innocent kids. They have their Jabez was innocent. He was just a child born. And the mother called him son. Ah! Children, begin to pray. Let God talk to you. Begin to wake up and pray too. Decree and declare. Daddy, I decree, declare that this are ah, God will answer it. <laughs> I'm telling you, God will God know you. So I want us to just this morning, please be encouraged. Don't let people judge you by the car you drive, by the car or phone you use. So people will say to me, but this, you are still using iPhone 5 or so 4S. iPhone 6 is now one person told me when I was doing my son's uh, name is Edmund. I said, ah, which phone is that? I said, I don't for 4S. He said, ah, 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 man of God. With the way you travel, you're supposed to be using that iPhone 6. I said, which one do you use that? He said, ah, me, I use 6 plus. Yeah, I laughed. I said, I said, I said, I want this in six months. He said, no, I have the money to buy it. But I don't feel I need it to buy it. That's what I told him. He said, ah, man of God, your phone sometimes shows who you are. I said, no. My phone does not show who I am. My voice shows who I am. So I said, my people, cheap, yeah, they know my voice. Either I use pure water or I use Nokia. People will still hear my voice. I mean, it's not about the car you drive. It's not about the crowd you have in your church that shows that you are not dead. It's not about the tongue you speak that shows that you are spirit filled. Some people speak tongues and they are committing sexual sin. They are harm robbers. But you decide your life yourself. Correct your errors. This guy corrected his error. Please. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm going to pray for some people today. I, 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 I see things. I said yesterday, sir. God said to me, son, I show you miracles, I show you visions. But why are they not prospering? Why? So I put just one paper. And when they collect the paper, in that ministry, man, they just came for the paper. After the paper, what happens? Is that the end of it? So I put have paper, no job. So I put have paper and money, no direction. So I want to get married. I just want to marry. Hey, what is, there's no men here. Hey, hey, there's no church there. It's always men. They have men. <laughs> you go there, you might be the wrong person. Problem. But meanwhile, in that place where there's nothing, there's something. God is everywhere, sir. So let us. There must be somebody here. And God, they have, they have intimidated me. They have said to me, I, one day they called me. I told you, I told you she called me last week. She called me on TV. Ah, man of God. I just saw 
to see me. I used to come to your retreats three years ago. I said, eh. And that three years, I was crying. I was in my stomach. Now she abandoned me for three and a half years. She now saw me on TV. She now comes to make appointment. The same people have rejected you, abandoned you. But go to God. Only God will answer you. I am just encouraging you. I am just giving you the point, the idea. Go to God. Let God, God change my story. Don't judge me by the crowd of the church. Judge me by what I preach. Judge me by who, what I, how I live. That's the way it is. Big church does not make, does not, does not bring, some church are big, no anointing there. No miracle, nothing. No testimony, nothing. Yeah, I have to thank God for giving you a job, a car. That is not my testimony. I don't want that testimony. That is thanking God. I want this girl to say, I came here, and when I was worshiping, I, can, I felt led by God to, to lay hand upon somebody. And when she does, miracle happens. That is what testimony. <laughs> Are you getting that? God will give us testimony. Amen. Let us rise on our feet. I want you to just close your eyes. If you have seen or you are not fulfilling your destiny and you know something is not right, talk to God now. Daddy, forgive me. If I have not been motivating myself, if I have not been pushing myself, Lord, this morning, I want to begin to push myself. Talk to God. I want to begin to encourage myself better. I want to begin to push higher. I know I can do it. I just need a push. Lord, push me. Talk to God. Lord, push me. Push me, my God. Push me. I need that push, my God. Help me. Heal me. I need my confidence back. I need my boldness back. I want changes in my situation. Lord, I want to do more for you. I want to believe in you. I want to trust in you. I want to put my faith in you. Please forgive me, oh Lord. Forgive my weakness. Forgive my fear. I have come here into your presence, oh Lord, my God, this morning. Take me higher. Advertise yourself through me. Pronounce yourself through me. Talk to him. That he pronounced yourself to me. Advertise yourself to me. I want to be encouraged just the way Jabez was encouraged. Jabez changed his destiny. Anything that could have affected my destiny, my marriage, my mother, my father, our foundation, our generation, our heritage. But today, I am starting my foundation. I put an end to my worries. I put an end to my concern. I put an end to my failure. I put an end to my sorrow. I want to start afresh from this day. I want to start afresh from this day. I want my story to change. Every letter of rejection, anyone that has rejected me, Daddy, I know you will not reject me. I want you to start afresh with me. Everywhere my name is concerned, any application I have submitted, I ask, oh Lord my God, for approval. I have come into your sanctuary today. I have come here, my God. I am starting new. Even with the church, is starting new. I am starting new. I want something new. The man of God started on his own. He encouraged himself. Daddy, I want to start afresh with you. It's not about numbers. It's not about crowds. It's about your presence in my life. I need more of your presence, oh Lord. I need more of you. Children pray. I need more wisdom. I need more knowledge. I need more understanding. Lord, I am just an innocent child. I am just innocent. Use me. Use my presence to bless my home. Use my presence to bless my mother, to bless my father. Use my presence to bless your church. Use me, oh Lord, my God. I am here. Send me. I want my destiny that has been caused to be changed. I want failure out of my life. I want poverty out of my life. I want loneliness out of my life. I want limitation out of my life. I want more. That base has for more. Give me more anointing. Give me more zeal for your work. Give me more courage, oh Lord. Give me more power. Give me more revelation. Oh, somebody talk to this God. I know this God. I know. I will, I, 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 I will continue to say I know him because he has done it for me. He brought me out of the miracle. He brought me out of the pit. He will bring you out of your pit today. 
All you have to do is talk to him and believe in what you say to him. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Just begin to say, Daddy, we thank you. We thank you, my God. We give you glory. We give you honor. 